So how to get your first social media client without spending money on ads, bots, or doing cold calling. So before we actually get into ways to get your first client easily, let's just go over like why people actually struggle with getting clients. So in my experience and like what I've heard from coaching students and through Instagram direct messages is that it always fits into one of these three categories. So more often than not, like when you're just starting out, you've got limited experience when it comes to sales and this can make it really hard to get clients. If you don't know what you're doing with sales, then you know it can, be, it can feel awkward to try and get a client for social media marketing. If you're not confident in yourself, it can be really difficult to convince a client that they need social media for their business. And like I remember one of my very first meetings with a client for social media, um, who I didn't close, obviously. It was with a realtor from the US, and I explained what I could do and what I could offer him. And he said that he agrees with the fact that he needs social media to build more of an online presence, but that he will keep you know in touch and let me know if he ever decides to go with to, you know to let someone do it for him. So he wanted the, he understood, okay, I need social media, but I'll do it myself and I'll let you know if I ever need someone to do it for me. And then he said, um, you know, we'll keep in touch and I'll actually teach you how to sell. So the person who I'm trying to sell said to me, I'll teach you how to sell. Like, you know, it doesn't get much worse than that, does it, to be honest. I mean, if, you know, if a client actually tells me he will teach me how to sell better, then you know you've done something wrong, am I right? But... Uh, yeah, so by the way, uh, for those of you that are in this situation now, you know, please just don't get disheartened by this little story or anything like that. Um, I got sales coaching and then, um, you know, it just it just went so much easier from there. You know, I feel much more confident now in my selling ability. And to be honest, I actually believe I'm quite good at it now. Like now that I've got the coaching, I've sort of invested in, in guidance, as they call it. Um, you know, got coaching from people that are actually really good at it. Um, I read a couple of books, Jordan Belfort. Um, the Way of the Wolf. That's it. That's the one. Jordan Belfort, The Way of the Wolf, is a, a really good book to read if you if you're not if you don't feel confident in sales. Anyway, moving on. Uh, the second reason that people struggle with getting a client is that they literally have no money to invest into ads or invest into a lead generation magnet or even LinkedIn bots because they. Uh, the rage nowadays aren't they um so you know like what better way is it to get a client than to place video ads on facebook say you know did this stuff works because if it didn't you wouldn't be watching this ad right now it's proof that facebook ads works to the business or the client and you've immediately shown to the client that you can do you know what you can do and you've shown them that you're able to target but you know if you haven't got the money to invest into ads then how would you do it if you haven't got the money to set up a linkedin bot then you know how would you get leads if you haven't got the money uh, to you know set up an automated outreach system then what you need to do you know i understand you know this is one of the biggest reasons why people can't get clients or you know get their first client for social media because they feel as though they haven't got the money to invest into ads to get the first client so the third reason why people struggle with getting their first client is that they just can't bear the thought of doing cold calling you know how could there be anything worse than phoning a total stranger interrupting their busy day and then trying to sell them something like most of us have been on the other the other side of those calls as well you know and you, you get a phone call randomly you answer it and then someone you've never spoken to before starts asking you all kinds of questions and he's trying to sell you something and you know you just you, you know yourself how annoying it can be and you know how frustrated you feel when someone like that calls you and then you know sometimes you feel bad for hanging up on them so you just let them ramble on for a bit and you just feel awkward you just want to get off the call as soon as possible yeah, you know he's going to try and sell you something, so you immediately, you know, you're on offense, you're trying to say no to everything he asks you, and you try to avoid his questions and stuff like that. So you know how the person on the other side is going to feel when he gets your call. And then to add to that, you know, if he does actually answer, then you've got this insecure uh, kid with a soft little voice almost stuttering, saying, you know, are you interested in my social media marketing service? You know, just the, the thought of that alone can give people sleepless nights. And that is not to bash on the cold call, by the way. Like, I actually still think it's a liable lead generation tool, but it's a numbers game, and people just can't stand the rejection enough to pull through with it, okay? So now that we've actually established why people struggle with landing their first client, what would be the ideal situation? I think it comes down to two things. Number one is warm leads. So, you know, obviously the reason why cold calling doesn't work for a lot of people is because these leads are cold and people really struggle with convincing cold leads or people that are may or may not be interested 
to, to first of all, that they need social media and second of all, that they need to go with them as an agency. And, you know, there's obviously because they're cold, there's a bigger chance of getting rejected. And, you know, the, the re that's the reason why a lot of people don't want to cold call because the chance of rejection is just too big for them. And another reason why people always feel salesy when doing the sales pitch is because it feels like they're trying to scam someone into buying something that they didn't necessarily need in the first place, am I right? So the goal is to find clients that are warm, clients that are already on the lookout for social media, and clients that do not need to be sold on the idea that they need social media. All you need to do is convince them that you're the guy for the job, and then basically it's a done deal. And the second thing we need to be on the lookout for is we need a low barrier to entry to find these people. So we need to find a way to get these clients without spending money on ads, without spending money on funnels, without spending money on lead magnets, or without setting up bots. Because more often than not, people that are just starting out do not have the money to put, you know, all the funds to put this in place. And the reason that they are actually on the lookout for clients is because they need the money. So now that we've established why it's hard for people to get clients, and we figured out what the ideal situation is, where to find these type of clients. So where do we find clients that tick off both these boxes? Where do we find clients that are on the look over social media? And where do we find clients that we can find without spending money on a lead magnet? The answer is freelancer websites. Now, before you switch off, just, just hear me out, okay? So these businesses are actively looking for you to come in and provide a solution for their problems. So these, these are actual businesses, you know, big businesses, small businesses, whatever. These are people that are so much in need of social media marketing or any type of social media service that they've gone on freelancer websites and placed an, an ad or a job offer that they are on the lookout and they need people to call them to take over for them. Okay, so these people are on the lookout for social media, so the warm leads and there's a low barrier to entry because we don't need to pay to get in touch with them. You know, we don't need any type of funnel in place. We don't need to set up Facebook ads because they're literally already reaching out to us through a third party, like a freelance website. And the freelance websites that I actually recommend are freelancer.com, upwork.com, and people per hour. And then out of the three, I use Upwork most. People per hour I use the least, but uh, my business partner has actually got quite a few qualified leads through people per hour. So I would definitely recommend uh, creating an account at the very least. And freelancer is a liable option if, for example, uh, on Upwork you get, it's called Connects, and you're allowed to spend 60 Connects a month. So that is the equivalent of uh, you're allowed to apply for 30 jobs. And then mostly if those 30 jobs are or if those connects are, have ran out, then I move on to freelance and basically do the same thing. So, like I said, these businesses that post on freelance websites are actively looking for you to come in and provide a solution for their problems. Now, the reason why I said, you know, hear me out is because there are a lot of misconceptions about freelance websites. For example, this one, it's only for virtual assistants in third world countries. Now, I understand why people think this, you know, I, I understand that, the word freelancer alone, you know, it doesn't say it, it's not um, like agency.com, is it, you know, or anything like that. You know, it's it's freelancer.com. And pe when people think of the word freelancer, they think, OK, you know, doing small medial tasks for peanuts like two, three dollars an hour. And, you know, obviously virtual assistants are really up and coming, especially with the book, The 4-Hour Workweek. A lot of virtual assistants from third world countries like Pakistan and like India are now on freelance websites offering their service and offering uh, to basically pick up the stuff that we do not like to do. However, you can actually filter on higher paying jobs on these websites. You can increase your hourly rate and you can even mention in your profile that you're an agency. So for example, upwork.com, you've got an hourly rate, uh, which we'll get to in a minute, but basically you can hire that hourly rate to 50, 60, 70, or $100 an hour. And by doing that, you automatically pre-frame to the business that you are not a freelancer that is gonna do it for two, three dollars. You're either really experienced or really valuable, and that is why you've got an hourly rate that is so high. Also, what you can do is you can filter on higher paying jobs. So again, on Upwork, you've got the filter option and you can actually filter on a fixed price, anything over a thousand a month or a thousand per project. And then you just get all the jobs that are higher paying and then you leave out all the lower paying jobs, the little virtual assistant jobs or the, like, the one-time logo creation jobs, okay? Misconception number two, like I mentioned before, you know, the hourly pay. So a lot of people think that literally the only way to use freelance websites is to get 
paid hourly. Now, you know, we've, we've all learned this through, uh, I think, like the likes of Ty Lopez and um, I think Sam Ovens explains this as well, that we need to get paid by the value that we provide rather than getting paid hourly because if you're getting paid hourly, then you're still trading your time for money and that is something that we need to try and prevent, okay? So, yes, we do need to have an hourly rate on these freelance websites. For example, on Upwork, we do need to fill in an hourly rate but you can agree upon a fixed price with the client. So what you know, what, what what you should always do and what I always do when I use freelance websites is I explain right away to the client that, listen, the only reason why I filled in an hourly rate is because I had to for the website, but that we are a social media marketing agency, we are a team, and we do not work hourly. We work for a fixed price per month in a, re like a, in a retainer form, and for that price, we do our service. And you no, know, even if this takes us... 20 hours a week or even if it takes for five hours a week it's still the same price and more often than not the clients actually prefer this because they know okay so much money is going out to my bank at the end of the month or the start of the month and you know you can see the return investment right away whereas if it's hourly you know they're constantly on the lookout seeing okay how many hours is he actually putting in and how much value is in those hours okay common misconception number three is that you can only find low paying jobs on freelance websites Discussed it before, I know, but basically what you can do is you can filter on the larger companies, companies with larger budgets, and like I say, uh, you know, the freelance websites are used by companies big and small. It all comes down to how you use these platforms. So, like I said, you know, filter on companies with large budgets, filter on companies with a fixed price of over a thousand or over two thousand a month and filter on only expert jobs. So leave out all the freelance jobs, leave out all the virtual assistant jobs or the one-off logo creation jobs and only go for the whales, okay? Misconception number four is that the lifetime value of these clients is lower. Now, this is something that I have experienced myself as well. So I also had this misconception for a while that these clients are easy to get, but also easy to lose. However, it all comes down to the results that you provide that client. So yeah, if you're getting a client for a thousand a month, and you are costing him a thousand a month and he's not seeing any type of return investment, then the chances are after a month he's gonna say, okay, you know what, um, I've enjoyed the collaboration, you're a nice guy, but you know this is where I draw the line, um, You know, I wish you luck on the rest of your social media journey. However, if you provide them with a return on investment, then the client will have no reason to leave. If he's paying you a thousand a month and you're earning him two thousand a month back, you know, through Facebook ads, through sales, through uh, getting leads in or anything like that, he will see no reason to leave. Like, why would he leave if he's earning a thousand a month extra by hiring you? There's literally no reason why you would do that other than there's a there's an agency that can get him 3,000. But the chances are, if you can get him a positive return on investment, he will see no reason to leave and he will stay with you for as long as possible. Okay, so those were like the misconceptions or the like the, the reasons I get from people when I recommend freelance websites and they say, well, you know, they, they say these things. Uh, so I hope I just cleared that up a bit and I hope I sort of cleared the, the freelance name, if you will. So what kind of services can you actually offer on these freelance websites? And I think this all comes down to what you actually like doing. You know, there's no point in doing um, graphic design, for example, if you hate graphic design. You know, don't just do something because it pays well or don't just do something because everyone else is doing it. If you do not like social media marketing or if you do not like videography, then don't do it. You know, focus on stuff that you do like and master those skills, okay? So the most common services on these freelance websites are social media management where you post on behalf of the clients, you manage their pages and you make sure that, you know, the pages grow organically. Number two is social media marketing where you leverage paid ads, so Facebook ads, uh, you create sales funnels to get those clients a bigger return on investment, get them more sales by using paid traffic. Thirdly, graphic design, you know, create logos, create nice flyers, create nice graphics for these clients. Um, another really popular service on uh, the freelance websites. And again, the misconception is that these are low paying services, but if you're really good at graphic design, then bigger companies will pay you a lot of money to do the graphics for them. Number four, videography. It's a bit more of a local thing. Obviously, you can edit videos uh, remotely, but if it's actual videography, then you need to physically be there. And again, on freelance websites, you can filter on location. So for example, I'm in the Netherlands. I can filter on videography jobs in the Netherlands and see if there's anything available for me. And then I can actually go there, film the content, edit it, and then upload it or send it to the client. Another really popular and really high demand service is copywriting. So doing sales copy for, for companies. For example, you know, like if they're gonna put an ad 
up on uh, Facebook about the, you know, what is it, salon service or spa service, and the copy is literally just come now to buy. You know, if you can create like a small story out of that, that crushes the limits and beliefs, uh, entices the client to actually come by or to, to opt in or, you know, with the way there's a call to action to do it now, then, you know, companies will pay you a lot of money to do that. And the last two, both considered die and breed, but actually still uh, in high demand are SEO, so Google ads, so placing um, ads for the clients so they rank higher in Google and website design. So in my opinion, the easiest way to get your first client is social media management. And again, I understand that people say this is a convenience offer and that there's no return investment or anything like that. But if you're just starting out, if you've got like minimal experience with all of this and you just want to get a bit of extra money, a bit of extra income, or you know, you just want to get your first clients on board for the portfolio, just you know, to to sort of dip your feet into the social media marketing sphere of water, then social media management is the easiest way to get a client and the best way to go. So what will you be doing if you get a client for social media management? So let's just go back. The reason why you weren't getting clients first is because you wasn't good at sales, you had no money to invest into Facebook ads or bots or anything like that, and you couldn't bear the thought of cold calling. So now we found clients that are warm leads and there's a low barrier to entry through Fleance websites and you're gonna offer them a social media management service, what are you actually gonna do for them? So you, you're gonna do the following. You're gonna take control of their social media pages, so you're gonna get their password and their username, you're gonna log in, and then you're gonna take control of their pages. So if there's a comment, you reply to that comment. If there's a DM, you reply to that DM. If you need to post, then you post on their social media pages daily. Again, this is all in discussion with the client, so if the client just wants you to post, and he doesn't want you to comment on anything, then that's fine. You know, you just need to make sure that the client knows uh, what to expect of you and that you know what to expect from the client. And if the client does not want to give you a password or a username or anything like that, you can use third-party apps like Hootsuite and Buffer to do this. But anyway, you're going to take control of their social media pages. You're going to create their content and post on their behalf. So you're going to create 30 graphics or 30 videos or, you know, just for every single day of the month, you're going to create a piece of content and you're going to post it on their social media pages for them and then you're also going to grow their pages so you're going to like other pages on their behalf you're going to like other posts on their behalf and you're also going to comment on other posts on their behalf again this all comes down to what the client wants if the client just wants posting then obviously that's all you're going to do if the client wants actual outreach reputation management you know building a community around it then you will need to do these services it all comes down to what you offer the client and what the client wants so how to actually price this okay so we know what we're going to do we know how to get the clients we know what we're going to do for them how are we going to price this what can we ask for this service? So for social media management, you can ask anywhere from 800 to 1200 US dollars a month, depending on a few things. Number one, the size of the company. So for example, if it is a, you know, a local barbers that, uh, so not any, no high-end salon or anything like that. So it's a local barbers, and to get your hair cut at this local barber, it costs $20. Then it's gonna be very hard to sell a service for 1200 if they're literally just getting $20 per client. However, if you're managing a page for this big high-end um, business to business service, um, any type of like business enhancing workshop with high-end products, anything like that, then obviously it's much easier to ask for $1,200 a month. So it depends on the size of the company. It also depends on the value you provide. So like I said before, you know, if you're only posting for this client, then, you know, it's going to be much harder to ask for 1200 a month because you know you're not really providing a lot of value. However, if you're actually growing the pages, you know, you're you're creating a community, you're really building a brand out of their business, then you can ask for a much higher rate. Also, again, the frequency of posting, if the client only wants one post a week, then it's gonna be really hard to convince them that twelve hundred that this is gonna cost twelve hundred dollars a month. Also, it depends on your sales skills and the quality of your work. So if you're if you're really bad at sales, like what I was when I just started out, then again it's gonna be hard because they can they can sense it, they can feel that you're not confident saying twelve hundred a month for this service, and then it's gonna be much easier for them to say, nah, I can't do twelve hundred, let's do four hundred, let's do five hundred. And the chances are you'll probably say yeah because you don't want to negotiate with these clients. And lastly, like I said, the quality of your work, if you're really good at graphic design, then you can ask for much more than if you're just, you know, creating graphics through Canva.com. Now, a word of warning, however, like I said, social media management is the easiest way to get clients. 
it's the easiest way to get your first client there's a low barrier to entry and through freelance websites you can actually get warm leads but social media management is a long-term game and will almost never increase sales for the client in the short term so Basically, what you're doing for this client is building a brand and creating awareness. You're not directly converting warm leads for them into customers or you're not actually getting sales for them. So you need to be very honest and clear with the clients when doing this service. Just tell them that this is a long-term solution and that you're not directly going in for the sale. You're actually building a brand. You're providing value for their customers and their followers and that this is a long-term game and that they can't expect sales overnight. If you do not tell them this, then the chances are they will leave you after a month because they had different expectations than what you provided them with, okay? So what return investment can you actually get for social media management clients? It's called social ROI. So what, you're going to, what you can actually provide them with is an increase in social media engagement, an increase in likes and followers, an increase in online marketing reach and mind share, an increase in Facebook ads, and increase in an overall social media presence. So like I said, you will not directly get sales for these clients, but if you're constantly posting for them and someone follows them, let's say for example, it's a slipper company, and you're constantly posting uh, nice looking images or graphics of slippers, and uh, there's a person that follows them and they see it every single day, then you've got that top of mind awareness, then when they actually do need slippers, they're gonna think, oh, hang on, what was that account that I constantly saw posting slippers on my social media? And then you can actually get this client a sale, but you're not actually going in for the actual conversion. You're just building the brand, building awareness, and if the clients, and if the customers come to you, then, you know, that's just a bonus. But the actual ROI for these clients is social ROI. So again, just explain this to the clients and be very honest and clear with these clients, okay? Okay, so we know how to get the clients, we know what to offer the clients, we know how to price it for the clients, how quickly can we actually get started with this? Now guys, there's literally no reason why you can't get started today. You can literally, after watching this video and subscribing and liking obviously, after watching this video, you can go to upwork.com, freelancer.com or peoplepowerhour.com, create an account and start applying for jobs right away. So, to-do list, if you actually wanna start earning money online and get your very first social media clients, you need to do the following. Create an account on Upwork, Freelance, or People Per Hour. Like I said, I really recommend starting with Upwork because that is, in my opinion, the best freelance website out there. Then, create a profile offering social media management services. Uh, quick disclaimer, Upwork actually don't accept any more social media jobs. So what you actually do is you create an account as a medical translator. This is something that isn't very common, so you will get accepted. And then as soon as you get accepted, just wait for an hour or two, just so they think that you actually are a medical translator and then switch your profile back to social media management, okay? So create a profile, offer a social media management services. Make sure that you explain that you're an agency and that you're not just a freelancer. You know, uh, have a high hourly rate, 50, 60, 70, or $100 an hour, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that these people know that you're not a virtual assistant from a third world country. Then apply for jobs that fit your profile and expertise, all comes down to what you actually like doing. If you want a social media management uh, client, then obviously look for social media management jobs. If you want to do more graphic design, then you know filter on graphic design jobs, okay? Then when you actually get the client, agree upon a fixed price. It's much easier for you as well as the client. And guys, just know what you're worth. The going rate for this is anywhere between 800 and 1200 a month. And don't be afraid to ask for that because, you know, that is that is the price. Everyone else is doing it. You know, okay, if you really don't feel comfortable with it, then just lower your price and, you know, you can build your way up. Uh, like, for example, when I started out, I was so fixated on a 1000 a month that I just did not want to go lower than a 1000 a month. And probably if I did go lower, especially when starting out, you know, I could have got more clients at the start. I could have started quicker, probably built my confidence quicker as well. So if you really don't feel comfortable with it, then, you know, lower your price. But guys, literally, the going rate for this is anywhere between 800 and 1200 a month. And you are worth it. You know, you are on these social media platforms every single day. You know social media inside and out. And you know are so much better than these clients. Because these are, just, just, just realize, guys, these are from a different generation. They don't understand social media. So everything you do on a daily basis on social media, even if it's posting to Instagram, applying a hashtag, replying to a DM, that is new to them. So you can provide value to them guys and that is why you can ask for 800 to 1200 a month for social media management, okay? So once you do that, you've got your clients, you've 
uh, agreed upon a price, you've got the money, then just rinse and repeat. You know, you can take on multiple clients and do this for multiple clients a week, a month, and uh, you know that is the, almost the easiest way to earn money online. Low barrier to entry, warm leads, social media management, you post on their social media pages and you get money for it. You can literally do this from anywhere in the world because it doesn't really matter to these clients. You can work from home, you can work on the beach, you can work in Thailand, Chiang Mai, you know, it does not matter for these clients, okay? So what I've explained in this video is how to earn money through social media management, and this is a part of social media marketing. So if you wanna know more about my story or more ways to earn money online or actual business models that are scalable to six figures, I highly recommend getting the Lifestyle Design Playbook. In this book, it, it, guys, this book is literally a complete guide to doing what you love, earning money from your passion and finally living the life you've always dreamed of. I basically give you all the information you need to start social media marketing full time, but also drop shipping, Amazon FBA, personal branding, and I actually give you the foundation to actually start building a six figure income so you can start doing more stuff you love and living life on your own terms. So what is actually included with this playbook? Lifetime access to all the chapters. Now I know it's nowadays it's really popular to actually only offer the first chapter, and then once people get to chapter two, they need to pay a little bit extra. And you know, it's it's some it's it's not necessarily a scam, but a lot of people do this. I don't. It's lifetime access to all the chapters, fifty six pages, fourteen thousand words of wisdom. So by paying once, you get access to all the chapters forever. I will never ever take that away from you. Secondly, you get a comprehensive explanation of multiple six-figure online business models like i explained before social media marketing drop shipping amazon fba personal branding and much much more also how to get started with your first online business without prior experience so in this video i explained how to get your first client with social media management in the book i explain how to get started with all the other business models even if you're not experienced in it okay and lastly, you get access to the information that cost me years to find and learn. So like I explained before, when I invested into guidance to get better at sales, I've been doing that for all the aspects of my life in terms of social media marketing, in terms of ads, in terms of building a personal brand, in terms of earning money online. I've bought courses, I've got coaching, I've I've been to see mentors, I've spent hours and hours spending thousands on, on, on all these information products to actually get to where I am now and you get access to all that information that has cost me years to find and learn. So what is this value that a lifetime access to all the chapters is valued at $297. A comprehensive explanation of multiple six figure online business models is valued at $197. How to get started with your first online business without prior experience is valued at $97 and access to the information that has cost me years to find and learn is valued at $197, with a total value of $788, but I'm not gonna charge you $788 for this book. My goal is literally to positively impact the world, and I know that by practically giving away this book, I will reach a larger audience of people wanting more out of life. And that is why I'm only charging a one-time payment of $35. Now, obviously, if you've never heard of me or, you know, you've just stumbled onto my channel and you watched the video, then, you know, you might be a bit skeptical about this. You know, who is this guy trying to sell me a book? You know, what's what's all this? Just don't take my word for it, okay? Just just look at what others have got to say. Now, these are just free testimonials that I've got, like, within the first week of publishing the book. If you want to see more testimonials, then just click on the link below and you can go to the website, the landing page, where you've got many, many more testimonials. So let's just look at the first one. The first, one of the very first comments I got was a DM from a guy in Bulgaria, like of, of all places, Bulgaria, some from, someone from Bulgaria bought my book and said, hey Josh, I just want to say your content has really helped me focus on improving my life and figure out what I want in this world. I bought your ebook and I even showed it to my dad and he's reading it now. It was the kick up the ass that I needed and just thank you for that. I've bought ebooks in the past and I've lost faith in online products because most of them are a scam. But you are the real deal, man. I'm so glad I found your account. If you're ever in Bulgaria, please let me know. I would love to meet you. So this guy is from Bulgaria. He wants more out of life. He bought my ebook and he now knows exactly what he needs to do to earn money online. Moving on. The second one. 
Judging from the DM, I'm almost sure that this guy is from Australia. So, uh, again, you know, first person from Bulgaria, second person was from Australia. He said, mate, how are you pricing this at $35? The information in this ebook is worth more than entire courses that are being offered for $997. I not only have an understanding of business models you explain in the ebook, but I now also know which fits me best and I have the mindset to take action now. Thank you so much, brother. So basically what I do in the ebook is I explain various business models and then I make you pick one that fits you best. So one that fits, so basically you pick something that you're passionate about or you design the life that you want, design the life of your dreams, and then you pick a financial vehicle or a business model that suits that best, okay? Moving on. The third one I got was from a guy from the UK, I think. He said, I just read it, bro, and that was one of the best ebooks to drop this year, period. You literally went from A to Z in this book, from mindset to all the different types of businesses you can run and how to run them effectively. And then you even went the extra mile to throw in five to 10 pages on automization and how to generate money passively. People are basically getting a course in this book. Thank you so much, brother. Drop tons of value and you went above and beyond with the value. I absolutely forgot to mention that. So you do not only get business models and how to actually earn money online. You also get an extra 10 pages additionally. So next to all this, you get an extra 10 pages on automation and how to be more productive with it as well. So guys, let's just go back. So what you actually get in this playbook is lifetime access to all the chapters. You get a comprehensive explanation of scalable six-figure business models that you can actually start with prior experience and you get access that cost me years to find in addition to also information on how to automate it and how to be more productive and all that for a one-time payment of $35. So guys, you've now got two choices. You either don't invest in the playbook and you don't invest in yourself. You know, you stay as you are, you just use the information that I gave before the playbook, you know, you're yeah, you do social media management, yeah, you, you apply for upgrade jobs, that is fine. But other than that, you don't really take any attempt to make a change to improve the position in your life. You know, maybe you'll you'll learn how to do this yourself, or maybe you won't. You know, but if you do, you know, you'll probably be in the trenches like I was, you know, trying to slowly learn how to do it. You know, spending the money yourself, uh, probably much more than the playbook actually, and uh, just spending a lot of time spinning your wheels. And you know, you'll know you also have to deal with the, the cash loss and build your business without the support or any step-by-step -step guide, which is completely fine. You know, No hot feelings there. Or you can join the Lifestyle Design family, buy the playbook and receive the support from me and enter the community of people that you know can actually help you with the issues or any general questions that you've got. So the real question actually is that what is stopping you? It's literally a one-time payment of $35. Like this phone covers that are more expensive than $35. What is actually stopping you? The opportunity is there, guys. All you need to do is take it and commit to living life on your own terms, okay? So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got some out of it. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you actually bought the playbook. Uh, also, if you've watched this far, then drop your Instagram username in the comments down below and I'll make sure to follow you back. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.